Hi everybody, this is Cat Day with SPM TV and I am here today with Mary Avina. Mary, um, let's talk a little bit about who Mary Avina is and how you got into snooker and pool. So, um, I went into pool as an accident. Mm -hmm. I went to a bar when I was modeling and I fell in love with pool. And I just started playing pool every day. I quit everything else I was doing. And all I've been doing since is just playing pool. <laughs> Did you quit modeling too? Yes, I quit. <laughs> I quit uh, <laughs> I quit modeling just to play pool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And let's talk a little bit about your schedule that you have going on here. You're going to the Can to to Canada to the Predator Canada Women's Open the 17th and through the 20th of August. And then you're going to the U.S. Women's Snooker Open on August 26th to the 28th in yes. Seattle. And then it gets worse. So I'll be on the road for two weeks. Uh -huh. And then I get home. I'll be home for days. And then I'm going to the Texas Open. All right. So it's, it's actually quite a lot. But yeah. th the Snooker Tournament is a historical event, so I have to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, the first one in the in the United States. Yes, it's a big step. And I was going to go play snooker in Europe anyway. So this is going to be a nice step towards that. Uh -huh. You know, I'm already invited to go to Europe, but I there's nice the idea that I'll be able to play at home. Right. You know, and it's just they already picked up Microsoft. So this is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at some of their sponsors. They have mm -hmm. um, Tam and Litman Lights and a bunch of others. But mm -hmm. got a well-rounded assortment of sponsors. And it's also at a brand new game room, Ox Billiards, which is beautiful. I'm really looking forward to doing it. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, and, uh, have they gotten the lineup yet or how many women have registered to play i do not know it's it's only the first one and not many women know how to play snooker in the united states right so that puts me in a very unique position it's why they did a story about me because there's just not as many of us right. so most of the women that play snooker that live in the united states are actually from europe uh -huh. some are from canada but in general most americans male or female have never played snooker. If they have, is very little. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what age did you turn professional, and when did you begin entering tournaments and earning money from the game? Well, in order, I started earning money right away. <laughs> so, within year one, I was beating regular people. Uh huh. So I was making money right off the bat. I started playing tournaments. Uh, prior around that same time, but you know, there was not as much money in it. So I kind of, then I went into playing for money. So I made, I was playing for money. I made a lot of money playing snooker. I used to play 10 by five snooker for money. Uh -huh. I clocked over a thousand money games in just over a year. So that was wonderful. So happy doing that. I wish I could do that now, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but officially when I started, there was a, I turned pro where I made all my money from billiards in 2012. So I'd be 20 years old. Uh -huh. it, that's, that's when I made all my money from pool completely. I didn't do anything else. I wasn't selling art because at the beginning, when I was playing snooker for money, I was also selling art. Right. So I would say I was 20. That's when it was. And I've been nothing but pool since. Right. And that's what, for the last mm -hmm. eight, nine years? Yes, and now I'm playing both right. <laughs> snooker and professional nine ball, which is <laughs> crazy, but yeah. you know, that's life. <laughs> um, you're obviously far more well rounded than most professional pool players with being the best female at trick shots. And 
you're top at teaching billiards, snooker, and now playing professional nine ball. Um, can you tell me how in what order this came about? So in order, it would be, I mastered bar box eight. So I was beating sevens for money within a year or two. Uh -huh. So that's one of the ways I was making money. Right. Um, and then I moved on to bigger tables and that would be 10 by five snooker. And I became, I wasn't the best player in town. By the time I left my small town, Cambria, I was the best player in town. Right. So then it would be, then I did trick shots. So trick shots were after that. And when I got my first pool table, which is the 10 by five snooker table, I didn't leave the house for three months. <laughs> I broke sticks. I made sticks. <laughs> I did anything you could imagine for three months. I was doing it. I didn't leave the house. I was just bah, bah, bah. Masses, masse, masse, one handed jumps. And then um, YouTube started paying me because of the trick shots. Right. And then I started giving lessons and doing exhibitions. And so since 2013, I've been giving lessons every week, year out, year out. Right. Some years I made more from lessons than anything else. And then there was the products. So it would be that order. And now I'm playing nine ball and snooker again. Uh -huh. So, so it would be that order. <laughs> right. And you still do your trick shots though, right? Yes, I do no. exhibitions and appearances, all of those. So the, what I call in the industry, a lot of us call them the black widow jobs uh -huh. because not many of us can get them. Those right. are mostly for wealthy people. And when you go to those parties, those aren't televised. So only those people at the party see you. So uh -huh. we do a lot of those. Right. Um, it, would, it would be me, Ava Matai, and the Black Widow. So I, for a long time, it was like three of us only getting those jobs. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nice jobs. That's awesome. <laughs> um, who's, who shaped and mentored you along the way in your billiard career? Well, I would say my dad, even though he doesn't play billiards, that was at the beginning, it was all my dad's, my stepdad talking to me in my background of my head, right. all the stuff he taught me as a child. And then after years of playing, I finally found people that I connected with because we think very much alike. Uh -huh. And that was the Filipino. So that would be Efren Bustamante and June, who has passed away since. Right. So that they were my mentors all together that's why i learned the most from you know i learned so much more from them than i learned from anybody else so when it comes to the men players that you look up to the most it would probably be Efren reyes and Bustamani. well i'm biased obviously right um, <laughs> <laughs> so i admit i'm biased so definitely Efren because he the we think alike so it's very easy for me to see what he's doing. Uh -huh. And on the snooker side, it would be Ronnie O'Sullivan. Although right. I don't know Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he does play very similar to the way I play when I get going. Uh -huh. So that again, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> and what female players do you look up to the most? Well, obviously the Black Widow, because right. everything I have done, in a lot of ways, it's thanks to her. Uh -huh. So she paved the way for a lot of the stuff that I was doing. Like a lot of my best jobs, year for years, you know, selling the products and doing appearances and exhibitions. A lot of that was laid down by her. Uh -huh. So without her being there first, I would have never been able to do what I'm doing. So, right. so definitely the Black Widow. That's <laughs> you know, cool, right? Yes. Um. Does she play snooker too? No, no. Okay, I was just curious. <laughs> no, sadly. You know, snooker is so much more difficult, and there's so few tables in the United States. Right. So a lot of it is also the lack of tables. I have to drive four hours away to go training. Uh -huh. That's the closest 12-foot snooker to my house. Right. So whenever I have time, I go there. And where is that at? It's um, Q Club in Houston. Uh huh. Hey, cute. Anyways, and it's owned by Manny, and he's wonderful. So that's my official training center of snooker at the moment. <laughs> but um, I'm actually talking to 
several of my backers and it looks like I'm just going to put one in my house. <laughs> right. That's the next step. <laughs> right. So you have a pool table and a snooker table. Well, maybe at first because my house, I'm remodeling it. Uh -huh. um, I'll probably at first have to get rid of the nine footer and put just a 12 footer because I have, I'm the house pro and also I have access to many diamond tables. Right. So where I'm house pro, I can just go train on nine footers. Okay. And then some of my students also have tables. Right. But they don't have 12 footers. So I'm better off having a 12 footer. Right. Looks like. <laughs> um, how many hours do you spend a day training? It's between four and seven. Uh -huh. It depends. So right now, because I'm trying to reach a level of mastery at professional nine ball and snooker on 12 footer, it's just, it's just endless. Like I'm, I'm broken down every day. Right. If I'm, you know, it's, it's pretty much every day, every other day. And I work, I just do it and do it. And do it. <laughs> I was listening to um, Jason Shaw talk and he has spent, since, uh, what was it, the World Cup or something, um, mm -hmm. he went on a holiday and then he has done, he got off of social media and was just, he'll like practice three hours in the morning, three hours later, or go and exercise, then practice more, then do something else, then practice more at night. And that's what you have to do. Yeah. He's, I mean, it, there's no way around that. If you want to be great, you have to put in the work. Yeah. There's no shortcuts to life. I mean, one of the only reasons I got so good at trick shots is because I did the same thing. Right. I did nothing else every day. And eventually I reached a level of mastery because of that. And there's no way to reach a level of mastery at anything if you don't put in the time. Right. You know, and there's no shortcuts in life. You just have to right. <laughs> bear it down and... <laughs> it's you know, called devotion <laughs> it's it's what you have to do <laughs> yeah. train yourself um what do you do i i don't think i ever asked you this what do you do for your mental training well technically um i've because i coach i'm actually certified in nlp uh -huh. and hypnosis and sports psychiatry a bunch of things right so i use that and also i read a lot so i read quite a lot so I read a lot of the coaching books on golf basketball martial arts uh -huh. so I read quite a lot and also I'm certified and basically the stuff you Tony Robbins teaches uh -huh. so that's also why I end up coaching so many other professionals so because I know the mental side much better right that's great um Over time, you managed to generate a business from your love of playing billiards. How did you go about achieving this? Well, again, it goes back to my stepdad. My stepdad was a businessman, uh -huh. and he never talked to me like I was a child. He was explaining business when I was a child, like I was a grown-up. Uh -huh. So, And then when I had the background in modeling when I was a kid and so I took all of that information. And when I started playing pool, I treated pool kind of like, like a business. Right. And I follow simple business models. So I always look, who's the client? What do they need? Uh -huh. It's So it's a very contrary way of thinking that most pool players have. I actually look at the environment, right? what the environment wants, and can I provide it? And if you do that, Things are pretty easy. It's why we were able to sell uh, so many DVDs right. and because that's what I, it was a niche and we took it and we sent tens to thousands of DVDs. And that's why I've had over 300 products carry my name. You mm -hmm. know, it's, you find a niche and you keep working at it. Right. When you say you have 300 products carrying your name. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> I don't even know how many chalks it's been. Oh, wow. So um, so when I was a kid, it was funny because people were mocking me because I was using magic chalk uh -huh. because it was two for nine dollars. And then like that, like a day later, I was I was sponsored for a short time by Kamui. 
uh-huh. and people were selling $30 chalks. So I worked really hard and I made chalks and since I've retired them, but you know, I was selling them for $9 and everybody thought that was the greatest thing. And I've, I've made came up with lots of different ones. That's just one example. Obviously I, I don't even know how many DVDs we went through right. different DVDs. Uh-huh. So we have, we had matches from old days that I remastered. We also had the instructional DVDs. Um, so it's so many things. And then there's also pretty much anything billiard related, except for a pool table has had my name on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like if, it, if I could find somebody that wanted it and I could make a profit and selling a good quality product, I did it. But I have since closed all of that down since COVID. Things really really went awry for me during COVID. Uh-huh. You know, I lost, I was making, you know, okay money from the products because the video DVD sales had dropped to close to nothing. Right. And then the other part, I was really making most of my money from lessons uh-huh. and then from appearances, so appearances. But so COVID really took me down. <laughs> right. Now so, that it's kind of eased up and is things starting to pick back up again? I will start selling products next year again. Uh-huh. But I, I've been so busy, you know, I did not see it coming. The WPB asked me to play. Right. And I was playing one big tournament a month, you know, one open tournament. Uh-huh. So I was playing with the men, you know, I wasn't even. And then the WPBA, you know, so now I have to prioritize the WPBA and now the snooker. So <laughs> I've been definitely overwhelmed. Right. You've just been going nonstop. Yes. And then I still have to keep up with the lessons that I, I have weekly students if I'm home. So it's 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 quite a lot. <laughs> so. Right. Um what particular skills and or what do you enjoy most about teaching students and sharing your, your skills? Well, what I enjoy most is that most of my students are the captains of their lead team. Right. So that's the majority of my students. So what I teach them, they end up teaching everybody. Right. And it spreads. But, and then when I teach pros, it's the mental side. So I'm not really teaching them, I'm coaching them. Right. And that's a beautiful thing because you're helping someone that's already magnificent reach their maximum potential. Right. So like they're here and you're taking them here, you know, and they already surpassed everyone else. Everyone else is here and they're here. (laughs) But I really love teaching on video form the most. Uh Obviously, I've been a little busier than usual, but that's where I really love the most because it reaches out the most people. And that's where I really love because all that help everybody getting better. They send me those emails and they ask me questions, you know, true questions, you know. Right. That's what I love the most because when I teach in video form, it reaches the most people. Uh-huh. You know, so I really love the impact it all makes. So when you say video form, do you have online classes or I have a lot of teaching videos I've done over the years. Mm-hmm. And also back in the day the DVDs we made. So the right. DVDs are no longer selling very well. So that has right. more or less dropped out. Mm-hmm. But you know, my production company has DVDs are just not as profitable as they used to be. So I'm not pursuing that. But yes, I also have a lot of videos on YouTube where I teach individual things. I used to have more, but I actually took a lot of them down over the years because of the copyright issues with YouTube. Right. <laughs> so. um, what's your greatest billiard achievement to the date? When honestly... For me, it's just that I've been making a living from it for so long Uh because it was such a harsh environment where I started. So many people told me it was not possible. Great players, by the way. People that can run racks told me that it was not possible to make a living from billiards. So for me, that's my biggest accomplishment. Yes, I've won a lot. But for me, it's just that I've done something that I was told couldn't be done. Right. Achieving, yeah. And it seems like when somebody tells you that you can't do something, that just makes you want to try that much harder to prove them wrong. (laughs) Well, it was 
I understood something they didn't because of my business background uh-huh. um, that it was a lot of it was their skill was not the problem is the way they were approaching the other parts of the game. Right. So there's a lot of other parts of the game and they, they didn't approach those correctly. Uh-huh. They never thought about other people very much. They were about winning and winning and winning and right. they didn't take the rest of the world into consideration. That's not enough. You can be the greatest player on earth at any sport, uh-huh. but if you're not benefiting the rest of the world, you know, right. <laughs> mm. let's talk about your sponsors. I have wonderful sponsors. Number one, Fort Worth Billiards, uh-huh. which of course they're wonderful to me. And they hooked me up with Bull Carbon, and now Bull Carbon's my new sponsor, one of my newest sponsors. Uh-huh. And then of course Legends, where I'm the house pro. Okay. So there I get to practice and I gave a lot of local lessons and you know, and then there's Texas Senior in construction, then there's a sparrow photography, and there's pro surface and design. And all of them do their part. I'm not doing this alone. Uh-huh. You know, what any one little part. Right. What is Pro Surface and Design do? Construction. Okay. So it's a construction company. That's cool. Right. And let's talk a little bit about the Sparrow. Photography. Right. He, he does photography. It's and he likes to feature me. <laughs> 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 and you know, people love. People love my pictures in a lot of ways more than I do. <laughs> so it makes people happy. And so yeah. I do it. Yeah, I saw something with you today. I went to your Facebook and oh my goodness, the food. <laughs> I was like, this girl loves food. Yes. People <laughs> love my how much I eat is a big, big factor in my popularity with women. So uh-huh. women that know me or follow me on Facebook, even if they never met me, they're like, your food pictures. Because <laughs> I eat, you know. Right. That's the, the other reason I didn't like modeling, because I like eating. Right. And I had to be underweight, and that's extremely difficult, you know, because you basically can't eat that much. Right. You know. <laughs> so. It's just starving. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what... There was a favorite rest said there was a favorite place you like to go before you play tournaments, but it, I don't think it said the name. There's a lot. It's more about my mood, but if I'm traveling, usually uh-huh. Cracker Barrel. Okay. Cracker Barrel or any delicious steak restaurant. Right. So those, you know, if I'm traveling, uh-huh. those are, you know, because that's a lot of it. Steak restaurants, Cracker Barrel. Right. Do you exercise or anything? Um, not right now. I I'm so busy and I'm running around so much that I don't have to. <laughs> You're getting exercise running around. Yes, I mean it. It takes like right now. I'm I'm relighting my game room, so right. I'm like on top of my pool table and nailing things. And so you do. You're active enough. You don't have to work out. <laughs> if Mary, if you could give any advice to to the players out there that are watching this, um, what would it be? Be good to each other. Be useful. If you're useful to the world, the world will reward you. So it's winning is very important. You have to do it. But if you don't learn to share whatever you get with other people, Mm -hmm. you will never be rewarded at the same level. So you have to learn to think about others too. And unfortunately, competition doesn't necessarily bring that out in people. And once the game's over, you got to go back to think you're on the same team. Exactly. (laughs) You know. I remember talking with Jason Shaw and I know that he he's played Darren Appleton, but he gave Darren a big, um, he really um, looked out for him in the interview and, you know, 
said why he was having why his game went right on spot you know and stuff this was quite some time ago but it was really nice you know to see him looking out for doing like that and it, it you know if, if more players did that i think it'd be great. if it's yeah. what we all have to do right but unfortunately we don't do it as a group you know if everything would be easier if we cooperated a little better yeah. <laughs> where where do you see yourself in five years well in five years I'll probably be doing the same thing. I'll just be playing more snooker. Right. So that will definitely be a thing I'll be doing more of. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, there's a lot of stuff in the air. So there's a lot of, I'm talking to producers and business people. So that stuff is not all up to me because I'm only one part, small part of the cog of the machine. Right. <laughs> you Are know. You talking to producers. Yes. So, um, so people like me, so that would be Emily Duddy, mm -hmm. the Black Widow, and back in the day, um, Eva Mataya. We do get approached quite a bit by TV people, but it almost never happens. Right. So, it's, so it's one of those things that because, unfortunately, because I'm under 30, I came in at pool at the wrong time, kind of. So even though I'm very popular, pool is not very popular by itself. So that means that every, every, I talk to TV producers and then they talk about making a show and then it doesn't get made. <laughs> so, I would love to see Billiards back on TV. So yeah, there was one fun one that almost got made that would have had me and the Black Widow on it at the same wow, time. Wow, that'd be great. Yeah, and it was funny because I hadn't met her yet. Okay. <laughs> so, so that would have been a funny first meeting. Yeah. <laughs> And as you know, there was a short-lived one with Emily Duddy. Uh -huh. And there was, when, when I first started, they had the, the nine ball movie. So uh -huh. it does come here and there, but you never, you just can't count on it. Right. You know? Right. And then the other part is the business side. That, yeah. you know, like today I was talking to millionaires and we're talking about, that's a, that's a completely different ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> Contracts and all that kind of stuff, right? It's tricky. <laughs> yeah. I I saw Tony Robles had posted a video, oh gosh, a few weeks ago. And it was him and Jeanette Lee back, oh my gosh, years ago. They were both so young. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I have a lot of those circling around and it was really fun to watch. I have a lot of those, so yeah. I can't show you cause I would have to turn the camera, but right. I actually have at one point I had over 300 books and videos uh -huh. and I have, so I've been watching that stuff, you know, before they started putting it on YouTube, right. I actually have VHS. I had to buy a VHS thing to play. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's find an old VHS player. Right. So there's a lot of great matches and accustats. And when right. you buy them, they're still on, on a VHS. Uh-huh. <laughs> My cat's trying to walk up here. Mm -hmm. Um is there anything else you want people to know out there that's going on with you that they don't know or I think um, I would like to say that I want I want them to look out for the new players. Right. So obviously Savannah, you know the Roadrunner. Oh yeah. I Savannah think is. people should should follow her, and then the Sophia Mass, the yeah. Pink Dagger. She yeah. was fantastic. I was I was watching her at one of the open events. She was fantastic, and of course I would like to say that people should start watching the new teaching channels. Uh -huh. that Christina Tatch has opened up. Right. And then, of course, um, Margaret, too. So right. they both have opened up their YouTube channels. I think everybody should go watch those. Yeah. You know, and just in general, to be more supportive of each other, you know, to remember that we're on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> so it's you important. Know? You know? Yeah. Um, trying to think. 
trying to think, is there anything else that we're leaving out or that you want to say? No, I think I said, I mean, we can always talk about new things next time. Right. But I think just support each other, you know, be good to each other. You know, it won't hurt you to like somebody else's work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, it's been great talking to you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for being on SBN TV.